Welcome back to another episode of my trading vlog, where most of the views come from returning subscribers. If that's you, please hit the like button. If not, consider subscribing. Today, I'm going to be taking a big shift in my trading. As you know, if you are a, a long-term follower, that the last couple of weeks, I've been on fire, absolutely nailing this downtrend in SPY and QQQ and shorting the market, I'm doing a great job there. Of course, trading as I do, assuming a lot of risk, I tend to lose those profits, which happened on Friday, break even, which is very annoying. And so I'm going to follow Obi-Wan's example and start using theta strategies, options, contracts, strategies to make money passively in the market. And the reason for this is because this is actually scalable. And by that, I mean, the more money you have, the more you can do and manage your risk and continue to make consistent gains. Slow and steady wins the race. The temptation is to get rich quick, but that is the greed that the market punishes. And so it's time to repent more or less from that sin <laughs> and start this long, slow process. But I think at the end of it, I'm gonna be very happy I did it. After all, I've been doing this for a couple of years now. And the question is, well, if I had been doing these passive strategies earlier, then I would be way, way much further ahead in in my progress as a trader than I'm currently at. Let me just just pull something up. I think I, I can pull 2% gains per week. When I go to an, uh, a was this compound compound interest calculator online put in an initial balance of 250 bucks and I shoot for 2% on a weekly basis in 5 years the gains are just insane and all I have to do is pull 2% every week which is not that hard to do right we're going to see I'm going to go for it I'm going to try to do this my goal is in 5 years is to hit that $36,000 target and it's probably going to be a little bumpy but I believe that I'm going to figure it out. And so that's the goal. And so these option strategies I'm going over are going to be focused on that. And one of these stocks that I'm going to be using is Fubo. Obi-Wan identified this one using his scanner. We talk a lot in the Discord. If you're not in the Discord, ask for a link and I'll drop it down there. You can join. You can watch. There's a lot of restrictions on roles. I don't like my Discord to get too busy. I like right where it's at. So if you have a role and you can post pictures and you can chat, you are the privileged few. I'm really hoping to build the community. And as I see participation on the channel, I'll be adding people and maybe I go through and I do some weeding and, and take some people off of those, um, those roles that have the ability to chat and drop pictures and such. Now, Let's talk about Fubo. Let's talk about the option strategies. I'm going to start with the technical analysis here. This is going to be a very important part of my new strategy where my channel used to be very, very focused on just the technical analysis. Now it's going to become an integral part of, but not the focus of the channel. The analysis is going to be very useful in helping me establish where I'm going to be assuming risk and where I'm going to be hedging and how I can use that to my advantage. For instance, looking at Fubo personally, I'm bullish. Now, Edward dropped some analysis for me, which I really appreciate. Thank you. And he was feeling like the market here that Fubo was going to drop. And he does that through studying the flow of the options contracts. And I, I do, I think that inherently that is correct because we're in a corrective wave, wave four, which I'm showing in blue here at the minuet degree. Within wave four, there are three waves, A, B, and C. And I think we found the end of the first motive trend and we're starting the corrective trend. So of four, we are in wave B and that should be a push higher. It may not be, we could very easily be moving sideways and forming a bear flag in which we'll get a sharp correction downward but I'm not favoring that analysis because wave two was somewhat sharp. Two or B. I say two or B because we are not quite known to be in a new motive wave as we are just breaking an incoming downtrend. We are inherently going to be going through an ABC correction first, waiting to see the formation of a new motive wave unfolding higher. I believe we're there. You're going to see I've started a channel through here. This is really just to show the, the channel of wave three or C. Oops, which I have three or B. That's not right. Three or C is correct. There we are. And I've actually pulled that lower trend line all the way back down through here. Of course, it doesn't make a lot of sense to pull it back this far, but it does seem to be an internal trend line through there that is that we can use to, you know, give some stability to our trend in general. Okay, here we go. It's very possible we could also be moving through some sort of leading diagonal through here in wave position A. There's a lot of correct counts. This is my preferred count right now. I'll go along and I'll edit, edit this as 
things progress, but I believe we're going to see a pull up in Fubo in, in, within the next week. Looking at the daily time frame, you may be asking why that is, and that's because my Elliott Wave count actually supports a little pop here, and I'm going to go through this. So we've had waves one, two, and three, and within three, we had five more waves forming an extension, which I show at the sub -menu wet level in yellow. One, two, three, four, and five. The reason why I prefer this count is because of the bearish divergences that form between the peaks of waves three and five. And you can see here the RSI when I blow it up that we don't have rising peaks in the RSI as we do in the price. This is the divergence that typically marks the end of a motive trend, specifically at waves three and five. Something I say a lot is generally when we have a break of these divergences, we are sending a significant higher low. And I believe that when this happens, this actually tends to be a B wave, which is the most annoying wave. And if that's true, we'll be looking for a push into over bought one more time as wave B gives us a bull trap and then price corrects down to wave C, giving us a flat correction in wave four and this could easily be forming a right angled and ascending broadening formation or a megaphone. And those chart patterns, I believe, would be a, an appropriate fit here. In which case, I'd be actually be moving the alternative count of A, B, and C back here to the sub wet wave 3 and unfolding, unfolding this out into a complex measured move up. And then this corrective cycle giving us the... Uh, base for the formation of the fifth wave to, to create a motive wave higher. I can really see things playing out bullishly here, but I understand the options analysis is bearish, and I think that's appropriate for wave four. So we're going to see how that goes. Again, if, if, if the price continues to drop, it's going to drop pretty hard because this push down was only the first half of that move. We'll get bearish continuation at uh, 202 on a higher degree. And on this wave degree, it's about 240, I believe. And I'll, show, I'll zoom in on this chart and we'll, we'll get a good look at that as well. Even if price grinds sideways here to form that triangle between the first and, and third leg of this move, or I should say waves of this move, that's okay too. I only need the price to expire or to close above 250 at the end of the week. In which case, I will still be making money on the contracts that I currently have open. I'm going to show you the Excel spreadsheet now that I've been working on. I'm going to be showing this frequently. This is where I'm going to be uh, keeping track of my theta plays, as we call them. Theta. Theta being the Greek used to express the loss of value of an options contract on a daily rate. Got this shown in black here and yellow so that it doesn't burn your eyeballs. On the first column, A, I have Fubo here, the symbol. And my second column is whether I'm short or long. There's a little drop down here. You just select the contracts of put. I opened it up on August 11th. It expires Friday. Days to expire is 7. The strike's 250, and the underlying price is at 248. It's kind of cool that Excel will actually do that. It'll take the... Uh, price and put it there for you. So I entered at $15 and I haven't exited, but you can see as I as I enter these values that it'll actually calculate the profit or loss for me. You can see that I'm short the put, which means I've sold the put and I actualize a small profit there, but whether or not I lose money on the contract will be determined when I close the contract and if the price of the underlying is below that 250 strike then guess what? I've got to buy uh, those shares at 250 even if the price is below it because someone else bought the put and that gives them the right to sell me the shares, in which case I become a buyer at 250 And so in order to hedge that downside risk, I bought a long put. I'm long this put, so it gives me the right to sell shares at $2. All right, does that make sense? What I'm hoping for is that price will expire above 250. It will close above 250 on the weekly. And what that will do is it'll let me keep the $15 that I have because the person or whoever bought the contract will be holding a worthless contract and won't exercise it. Therefore, I just hold the premium. And then I'll be taking out 
the the two dollars here that I bought the long put and the four dollars that I bought long call for out of my profits in which case I'll be making nine dollars which on two hundred and fifty dollars is about three point six percent this is what I'm looking for this is really good I like this a lot because what this does is that re that reaches that two percent target now if at the end of the week price is below 250 my maximum loss is 41 dollars minus and i say minus because i have this two dollar put here and that's going to help me hedge it's very possible that that two dollar put um is worth more it ha it'll have some extrinsic value and i can capitalize on that but i don't want to go into that too much really what I'm hoping for is to see that bounce for wave B, in which case I have a call here that I spent $4 on, which was kind of a lot given that, uh, you know, I'm only taking 15 of premium and selling that short put. But if this, if price moves bullishly as I suppose it will, then I'm going to be making money on this call with any luck. And I'll add that to my $15, which would be fantastic. If that call expires worthless, the cost of that call if is within the premium that I received. So really what I'm hoping for here is a close above 250. If, if price closes below 250, then I'm going to be in a little bit of pain. I'll have to buy those shares and I'll be selling calls then on those shares, covered calls. And this is a covered put. I, I, I'm, I'm using a cash account. I converted my account from margin to cash. All of these positions have to be covered if they're short. So that's what I'm working with. If I have to sell the call, short the call, it's going to be a covered call. So it's not really short. It's kind of, it's covered, but it's neither here nor there anyway. And so this is the speculation is that we've reached the end of the motive trend here. I'm going to show you on the 15 minute time frame. Um, is this actually on the hourly? Yeah, I, I've got labeled as the hourly chart, but it doesn't really, okay, no, we'll go into the hourly chart. It's really where the drawing belongs is on the hourly chart. This is what I'm talking about. We've got that bearish divergence between waves three and five, and I, and I have a five wave motive count through here. One, two, three, four, and five. And we have that, that bullish divergence now at the end of this downtrend motive wave between waves three and five, which means we go into a corrective cycle, which appears to be happening in a triangle. When it happens in a triangle, you have to be careful because if you get below the, the bottom of that motive trend, then we get another push down and the wave C would be as tall as wave A, which here is from about 380 to 240. Pretty brutal, right? Another dollar twenty down. Ouch. So I gotta be very conscientious of that. If that does start to happen, that would definitely put my two dollar put in the money and I'll be buying another one or a couple of them with the premium I have to try to hedge risk there. <laughs> it's crazy, right? It's crazy. But the goal is 2% per week, and this is how I'm going to start doing it. Now, I believe price may actually bounce up through here, and this won't break down. This looks bearish, right? But we don't have the confirmation breakout down yet. And here, the MACD is starting to creep up towards neutral. It really could go either way. In any which case, I do believe... We are getting ready for the next move. Volume here has been decreasing through this downtrend. And again, the RSI here isn't at, isn't quite over 50. It's at 51. You know, it'd be nice to have it in, to be pushing higher. We're going to know very soon whether or not I should bail or reposition. But this is what I'm going to be doing is selling these options contracts, building my account little by little every single week, and try to actualize that longer term goal and stop day trading. Rather, passively invest and hopefully it makes more money and do so with less stress too that's that's really the appeal there now that's what i have for today's video it's, it's gonna be a big turn in my analysis it's gonna be a big turn in my trading style it should be better though follow along hit subscribe let's go happy trading